Now let's get on with our counsellor's couch here with child and adolescent psychologist Claire Rowe joining me on the left and on the other side of the desk is psychiatrist Dr Tanvir Ahmed. Good to talk to both of you again. Uh, I want to talk about an issue that's raised in the news just today about real estate agents now wearing body cams as they host people through houses or, or check with tenants regarding rental uh, agreements and the like. Um, this means they're fearing for their safety, Claire, and it shows, especially when you're talking with tenants, that there are pressures out there that are pushing people to the limit. Yeah, it's a pretty sad state of affairs, isn't it, where people are actually having to wear or install cameras in businesses. I think it was, you said, second-hand shops as mm. well are doing it because that's where people are, are there to get, you know, cheap goods. And, and I suppose, you know, desperate measures push people to, unfortunately, turn against each other. And we saw that in COVID, right? People yeah. turn against each other and people get desperate. And financial stress is one of the, you know, I think the hardest things people will go through. And it really goes to the heart, you know, of being able to provide, obviously, for yourself, but for your family, for your children, and people panic, um, and, and they turn towards each other. And, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty sad state of affairs. Yeah, it's worrying. I suppose the, the initial thing is people are fearing physical intimidation, but it could also be what people say and threaten. But you, you're talking about a real estate operative going to perhaps check a tenant and maybe impose a, a, a rent increase. Well, that's right. I, I, I think what's interesting about this, Chris, is the cost of living crisis, what people don't have is they don't have a clear thing to blame, right? So you've got inflation, you've got Ukraine, you've got energy prices, you've got so many different factors. And I think a big challenge for this frustration people feel, they've got nothing to pin it on, right? And that, I think, then puts... It, it becomes this amorphous thing that needs to be put somewhere. And unfortunately, it seems to be getting onto frontline workers. And there's also studies out of Britain showing household rage, household kind of irritability has increased significantly. And I'm seeing it in patients too, where just this element of what we call low frustration tolerance, um, that is becoming a, a bigger segment of some of the symptoms people are so showing. So we're getting shorter fuses because of the cost of living crisis? Well, that is definitely the case. But what I'm adding there is partly because it because there's no... There's no it's such a grey cause. There's so many big, different areas that cause it. People can't pin it on anything. So there's nothing to almost absorb it. For example, if Albanese come and go, OK, it was my fault, etc. There's, there's nowhere to actually kind of uh, project your anger. Yeah. So and then I, it comes out in all these other places. I think I think the media plays a huge role in that as well because I think before you actually feel the cost of living crisis in your wallet, you, you're constantly being told all day. As soon as you turn on the radio, you're constantly being told everything's going up, cost of living, we're in a crisis, we're in a crisis. And so, you know, you, can't, you start to panic, don't you? Gosh, we're in a crisis. And so there's, a, you know, a huge responsibility there of the media. And, of course, that's clickbait. Do we that's, want to personalise these things? I know there's been a lot of focus, for instance, on uh, Philip Lowe and, of yeah, course, true. you mentioned Albanese. Is there a natural human tendency when you're under stress to try and blame a person? Yeah, I, I think, think so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think there is. Again, I don't think it's rash... I don't think it's necessarily a good thing to go, oh, yeah, this person is to blame. But it is sometimes the role of big leaders in these situations to almost acknowledge this sense of distress. Yeah, just as they sort of become the kind of uh, mourner-in-chief when things go they wrong. Become they, a receptacle. Yeah. they become a receptacle, yeah. right? Mm. And maybe there hasn't been a, quite enough of that for fear of them getting the blame. Hence, you know, people like Philip Lowe. Uh, the government was desperate to try and throw mm -hmm. off the blame to mm -hmm. Philip Lowe. Or 